Um, want to talk about the transfer portal. Uh, there is no shortage of quarterback play in the transfer portal. Um, we mentioned Bo Nix at the bot- at the end of hour number one. He's in the transfer portal. You know that Max Johnson and Miles Brennan from LSU are in the transfer portal. You know that Spencer Rattler from Oklahoma is in the transfer portal. Harrison Bailey was a four-star uh, commitment of Tennessee's who did not play this year. He's in the transfer portal. And today, Keaton Slovis from USC, their starting quarterback for two years, has entered the transfer portal. And Zach Calzada, Texas A&M Aggie starting quarterback <laughs> when Saints King went down, is also in the transfer portal. He will not play in the bowl game for Texas A&M. It sounds like A&M's got some sort of rabbit in their hat because Billy Lucci is saying that there's going to be a scholarship quarterback uh, that starts the bowl game for him. I don't know who that's going to be. I don't believe it's going to be Haynes King, but they'll figure something out over there in Jimbo land. That is a remarkable amount of dudes at one position in the transfer portal for some really high profile places. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a who thought a quarterback carousel going on this offseason with these quarterbacks in the transfer portal. I think their phone lines are definitely going to be buzzing. <laughs> you definitely can't run out of having any elite quarterbacks. I don't think it's, some of these guys are elite, but I think you're, you're signing them off of potential and putting them in your program and surrounding them with help that they – probably haven't had, which is why they're leaving. I don't know why Cal's out leaving. I guess he feels like Haynes King's going to run the show next year, and yep. he's probably not going to get many opportunities. So I think instead of kids trying to battle and earn jobs, it's just let me hit the portal. Let me look for the easy way, and um, hopefully I can get some playing snaps and playing time that way. So uh, I think that's going to be the president now in, in college football, especially with the portal. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I, I think you got to find more of a happy medium. I think when I was in school, I think the reason why they got to this because you had no choice in the matter. <laughs> you were there. If they wanted you on scholarship, they were making it hell on earth. And if you wanted to go D2, then hell, you can go. Have your way. Have fun. But you, you weren't going to another D1 program. It just wasn't happening. So I think that's kind of what created this monster. And now it's a monster because <laughs> these kids are just leaving. I mean, and these I think, are starters. Yeah. Keaton Slovis, Bo Nix, and Max Johnson – or starting quarterbacks. Yeah, and then they probably were the likely starters to be that next season. So I don't know for whatever reason. It's just I think since it's so acceptable and it's, you just see guys having success actually doing it. You see Joe Burrow go win a Heisman. You see you know Kyler Murray go win a Heisman. You see all these guys. Baker Mayfield? Yeah, Baker Mayfield as well. You see all these guys going transfer and win Heismans. It's like, okay, maybe I should transfer and see what happens with me. So I, it's just I think it's just kind of what it is now based off of how the rules used to be. It just changes the way that you approach building. We've talked all you know all year about how college basketball is no longer about building a program. It's about assembling a roster year to year. And you're kind of getting there with the quarterbacks. But you can't do this with an 85 scholarship team. But you can do this with a position. And it's basically going to be what five-star high – if you're a, if you're LSU or Oklahoma or USC or Georgia or Alabama, Texas A&M, you, what f- four- or five-star kid can I get? And if I can't, plug him in, then I'm just going to go get Michigan's quarterback. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's, that's just the way it is. I mean, these are such high profile names, Slovis, Rattler, Nix, Max Johnson, Miles Brennan, Harrison Bailey, Zach Calzada. Like these are guys that have had some success at the, at the college level. And, and the timing of the transfers with teams, you know, having a bowl game, but guys just bailing for the bowl game. Cause I guess they want to take visits and, <laughs> and evaluate things and get ready to, to enroll for January. It's, it's kind of odd. It seems like you could finish out the year and play the bowl game. I'm not suggesting that you have to because I'm saying that guys are going to go to the draft, and if you don't want to risk you know, tearing an ACL for a team that you're leaving, I, I guess I get it. But it just it seems like these decisions used to be made in, in January, and now they're made closer to Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think you kind of saw this thing building up when guys you know, start you know, missing their bowl games and opting out of bowl games, especially when they're totally healthy. And I think events – kind of happen to cause that. But I think when you kind of open that door and make it acceptable and NFL teams are still drafting you as high as they drafted some of these guys, it, it's no brainer for some of these kids. Like, why wouldn't I skip it? Why would not? Why would I go risk getting hurt in a bowl game if it's the penalties really, there's no penalty for it. I think it's acceptable now. So um, I think you're going to see a lot more of this, especially going forward as more as you see it. Um, kids are going to have success at one place and still see like they should want to take their talents elsewhere. So it's tough. I think it depends on who you ask because I'm sure a lot of Tiger fans in Baton Rouge aren't upset. Joey B came down to Baton Rouge. Probably wasn't a bad decision for him and his nope. crew. They're not probably complaining about that. So 
you get that, you got to, you know, get the, the adverse of that. And that's guys leaving like Max Johnson. So it's just kind of just how this thing's going to be going forward. Any of these guys a fit for LSU? Hmm. I would like to see Slovis. I wouldn't mind to see a little Slovis in Baton Rouge. Maybe Miles come back to town for a year to, you know, prep my boy Walker Howard. So a couple guys on this thing, but I definitely don't want to do Zach Calzada. I'd pass on that. <laughs> now, the interesting one is Miles Brennan. And mm-hmm. I'm under the impression that Miles Brennan has spoken with Brian Kelly and that they have, have, you know, have talked about this. I don't know what the result's going to be, but I would be thrilled if, if Miles Brennan decided to come back to LSU for another year. I, I'm, I, I, I think Garrett Nussmeyer's a talented dude, and I like to have him in the room. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that's a great place to start. And then I think Walker Howard's awesome to bring in out of the high school ranks. Uh, but I would like Miles' veteran presence in there. Now, the question is, and I know the answer. The answer is that Miles is not going to be guaranteed a starting job. With with two guys that talented that are young in the room, you're not guaranteed to start. So if you want to be guaranteed that, you know, Southern Miss or Southeastern is a better alternative if you just want to be sure that you can play your last year. And I understand that Miles wants to play. He spent five years in college and hasn't really played. He, he, he's got a little bit of spot duty in the Etling era, and he got uh, a couple starts in 2020 before he got hurt. But he really hasn't played. So if that's his priority, it's hard for me to believe that LSU is going to be the place that he lands because I just think the competition is too stiff to call it in December and say, yeah, you're going to be the starter. That's just not going to happen, and I think that's number one on its list. So while it sounds great and everybody, I think, would like that, it seems doubtful to me. Yeah, I think it's doubtful as well, too. I think you get a five-star quarterback coming into town who's super eager to play. and You know, Nuss didn't take this red shirt for no reason. I think he he was planning for the future, and he didn't hit the transfer portal, which lets you know he's planning to play quarterback as well. So for Miles, if he didn't want a competition, you know, going forward, I don't think he would, you know, change his mind and come back to that. Sounds good. I would love it if he did change his mind, but it's just probably not looking like that based off of, you know, kind of what we've seen and and why he left and, and wanted to go elsewhere. So tough blow, tough blow, but I think a five star walking in it kind of soothes that a little bit for my liking. For sure, and I think all these guys are probably looking for the place they can start. It'll just be interesting to see as as the wheels turn because these are, like I said, some very very high profile guys who have had a lot of success at a lot of different places that are, you know, solid football programs. So we'll see where everybody ends up landing thanks so much for watching hun hill on youtube now do us a favor hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like we'll see you next time